What is up, my quarantine party people? We are going crazy today, which I know, shocker, because we never do that, right? We're gonna do a little bit of review, a little bit more detail on some of the things we've talked about, and then I, basically, I'm so excited for the third section of what we're covering today, because every time I go over this stuff, uh, people just like really freak out. They're like, this is so cool, I've always wondered how to do this, so. Um, let's uh, just do a quick recap. This is our third stream. Uh, basically, I'm well on my way to, uh, you know, earning my uh, YouTube professor tenure. Here's what we did the first stream. We talked about stream etiquette. Did a lot of uh, just like little tips and tricks and life hacks on how to make what you've got work for you. So that was kind of the first stream is how to get uh, good or you know, the best audio quality you can get, the best video quality you can get with what you have. And then at the end of the first stream, we did a little recap, or we did like a little, I guess you can call it a tutorial on how to stream and get, you know, the best audio quality with Zoom and how to stream on Instagram. Now, we didn't do a deep dive into those, but just the basics for the people that wanted to know how to stream uh, by the time they left. Now, last week, our second stream, wow. We, um, we covered a, a remarkably advanced topic. Last week, we basically covered an advanced topic, and that is how to stream very high quality audio and video remotely for capturing and recording. So you can interact in real time with someone in really high quality video and record it, and you can do the same thing with audio. You can actually stream audio in or out of your DAW, like your, your digital audio workstation, Logic, uh, Pro Tools, Ableton, whatever you're using. You can actually stream audio in and out in basically real time, almost no latency at very high quality, and you can record people remotely. So uh, most of you know that uh, I was fortunate enough to get to start a podcast with uh, an absolute legend, a guy named Bob Clearmountain. If you don't know who he is, look him up. He's going to blow your mind. He's the most famous audio engineer in the world. Um, and we started a podcast recently. And, you know, because of the given circumstance, uh, we're quarantined, right? We can't really meet up and record new episodes. So I actually used this method that we covered uh, from last week and recorded him remotely. So that was really cool. And you can hear it on the most recent podcast that was just published. The podcast, it's available on all the platforms that uh, one would listen to podcasts on. It's called Clear Mountains Domain. Clear Mountain, one word, domain. So check it out and let me know if you like it. Drop us a like, a review, all that good stuff. So that's just a kind of a quick recap of what we've done the last uh, two weeks. Here's what we're doing today. I've broken it up into kind of three categories. First thing we're gonna cover is how to improve the audio quality of your live streams. Second, we're gonna do how to improve the video quality of your live streams. Some things you wanna make sure you're aware of, things like being able to use your iPhone as your camera. And the third thing is the thing I'm most excited about at the end, and that's how to improve the experience of your live streams. I'm, <laughs> it's, it's just that thing that every single time uh, I cover it, people are like, are you kidding me? I didn't even know this was possible. That's so cool. So let's jump right in. How to improve the audio quality of your live streams. So it's not like, it's not rocket science, right? There are a couple things like the microphone that you're using. Now, obviously I'm using a hype mic right now and uh, I, I think it sounds great. I don't know how it sounds for you guys. Uh, I have a noise or something in the other room, but uh, in the first, uh, first live stream I did, I actually talked about how to kind of work around some of that stuff. But the microphone you're using is really important. Now you have a couple different options when we're talking microphones. You have USB mics, and you have analog mics or mics that connect via XLR. Now a USB microphone is basically like hype mic, for example, which I'm using again right here. It's basically an audio interface and a microphone in the same device. So I'm not having to run this microphone into another device with mic pre's and converters and then into my computer. I'm just running straight out of this. It's got the mic pre's built in, it's got a converter built in, and it's doing everything for me all in one device. This mic specifically, just since we're talking about it, uh, the reason I'm a big fan of it is got built-in analog compression. Now I know that's not something new because I think I've probably mentioned that uh, in all the streams so far, but it makes it sound incredible. Now, let me give you a little bit of an example since we haven't done this, uh, so you can kind of see what compression sounds like. I'm going to mute my mic here and I'm going to turn the compression off so you can hear the difference in my voice. Okay, so this is with no compression. I mean, wow, right? Massive difference. I'm gonna put it on the next compression setting, which is setting one, let you hear that. 
Okay, this is with compression setting one. I'm gonna go to setting two, which is what I typically use. This is typically what I use uh, for, at least for live streams. I, I have different compression settings that I like for different purposes. If I'm recording an instrument, if I'm just speaking, it's a huge difference and people don't really get it oftentimes till they hear it, which is why I wanted you to get to experience it. Now we have one more compression setting. And now you can see why we call this setting ludicrous mode because it is crazy crunched, but it sounds so good. It, it gives you the sound of the, the radio voice, the podcast voice. So that's why this is so popular right now for podcasting and vocalists, everything. Everything in the world has compression on it, all audio. You know, it's usually done after being recorded or sometimes it's added in your digital audio workstation, Logic or Pro Tools, whatever. Um, but this mic actually gives you the ability to add it and it's analog, it's not synthesized, it's not a plugin. So really cool. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to uh, my normal setting and there we go. So microphone, you, you heard the differences in compression and, and I mean, right away when you hear it, you see why it makes such a huge difference and why I always talk about it until you hear it, you just, you know, you don't get it. Now, if you don't have uh, a USB microphone and there are a lot of them out there that honestly don't really sound good. I came across a video yesterday, uh, this guy on YouTube, he is, I think his name was like the voiceover professor or something like that. In the picture I saw an Apogee mic and it was, uh, it's not even a hype mic, it was two versions back. And so I just watched a minute, a minute of this video, I was thinking, oh, like, well, I wonder what this guy's gonna talk about. He said, I have to do this video to basically change everything that I've said because I just tried this mic and he was talking about the Apogee mic, it's a USB microphone. He goes, it's incredible he goes dare i say basically this is this is studio quality that i'm getting from usb mic so if you're gonna go with um an xlr microphone that adds another level of complication which is the next part i want to cover here you need an audio interface um obviously i'm like hey get an apogee audio interface uh there is no question in my opinion they sound the best but uh, if you have an audio interface you can connect a an xlr microphone uh, via an XLR cable to your audio interface. If it's a studio microphone or a condenser microphone, it's gonna need phantom power, which is, uh, you'll oftentimes see like a little uh, 48 and uh, the letter V, it's 48 volts. It's, that's basically what you need to turn on to power a condenser microphone. Okay, next topic. I'm gonna just mention a few things and explain them. Loop back, sound flower, aggregate device mode, low latency mixer in uh, a couple different ways. You have it in a bunch of Apogee products. You have a low latency mixer if you're using like an element series uh, interface or a uh, ensemble. You can use the Apogee control app to basically run uh, a lot of plugins with almost no latency. You can do that and run it right into your stream in OBS. Loopback is an application that's going to give you basically virtual channels. It's great if you need to route audio from one place to another place. So let's say I am using Logic and I have a Logic session there and I wanna get my Logic audio into my broadcast into what I'm using right now, which is OBS. If And by the way, if you don't know what OBS is, I, I covered that last week. It's just broadcasting software, basically. Back, Soundflower does the same thing. I'm, I'm gonna table that one for now, but I just wanna mention that there there's something involved there. Um, a couple of the things to keep in mind, and this is the last topic under audio quality, is uh, basically plugins. So you have the ability to add compression if you don't have a hype mic. You have the ability to add noise gates, effects, voice mods. How the heck would I add a voice mod and what would it sound like? I am a pretty avid gamer and when I'm gaming, I use this guy right here. This is called a Go XLR. So it's basically a little soundboard that's got all like full automation in it and it's got a bunch of sounds programmed into it. So I have the ability to trigger samples that I've loaded in, trigger sounds, and set up a ton of voice modifications. So one of my favorite things to do when I'm when I'm gaming is to mess with people, hop into a game with a bunch of random people and turn on a, a voice mod that makes my voice sound impossibly deep. I will never sound that way. Um, and it's so fun to talk to people because they just start laughing. They're like, oh my gosh, you have the lowest voice I've ever heard. And I'm great if you're doing something like a podcast because you can trigger sounds. 
anything you're doing live, um, if you're doing a like a live radio show where people call in um, and even a live podcast because a lot of podcasts are recorded live gives you the ability to do things like uh, trigger a funny noise every time something happens or like play a little sound intro to, to transition to the next segment of your show whatever so you also have the ability to with the go xlr uh, sample sounds live so that's the quick overview of the audio uh, again, if you have any questions, let me know. We're going to move to video, and then we're going to spend the majority of time in the third section. So we are now jumping into how to improve the video quality of your live streams. Uh, this one, we didn't touch on quite as much as audio in the first stream, but first thing you want to talk about is your camera. Uh, you have a lot of different options for cameras. The two that you hear everyone talk about are actual cameras or, or DSLR cameras, and then you have webcams, which is what I'm using right now. There are major differences between the two. So when you're using uh, a, a camera for film, you have lenses. Lenses are going to give you the ability to pick up lighting better. So you can see I have some like, you know, nerdy lighting here in the background. It looks kind of washed out and I have the setting turned down so low. When I look at it, it's it's hard to, you know, in the room even really see how it looks because I'm using a webcam. Webcams don't have great low light sensors. If I had here with me a DSLR, a Canon, a Sony, and a nice lens, I could add a few things. I could add a beautiful depth of field and I could basically pick up lighting much better. I would also have a wider uh, shot as well, depending on the lens I was using. You just, you have a lot of options that you don't have. Um, with the webcam. So I want to show you what that looks like. This is a streamer that uh, I like. He does a great job at the video side of streaming and that's because he's a professional video guy. I randomly came across this guy one day online. He has a ton of tutorials out uh, that I think are fantastic so I hit him up and uh, you know we may do some stuff together in the future. We'll see. There are a few things I want to point out. Do you guys see how behind him everything is kind of blurry and fuzzy he's created a really beautiful depth of field here also his camera has a fantastic low light sensor basically built into it and if you're interested in knowing what cameras he uses you can go to his channel i think he's using a sony a7s2 and i can't remember what his other one is but you see how his lights are so vivid looking in the background. If he had um, a webcam up like I have, it would look exactly the same as mine do back here. But because his low light sensor is really, really good and he's got a great depth of field, it just makes it look so much cooler. Another thing I wanna point out, see how it's moving? His camera isn't stationary. He has a motorized slider that's moving very slowly, adding just a level of excitement it, it's not stationary like mine i'm sitting here it my camera doesn't move his is doing this very slow pan across this room so it and you can see there are some jump cuts there because he's editing something but it really adds a cool dimension now there is one um that i recommend if you're interested in picking up a slider because the one i picked up was super inexpensive and they're usually expensive and it's so good and i've told a bunch of my my video friends and they have all uh, a handful of them have actually moved over and picked them up as well by a company called gvm great video makers i know cheesy they're out of china uh but i, don't, I haven't checked their amazon inventory but i think i purchased mine off amazon i think it was like 300 bucks and usually for the quality that this thing is, they'd be thousands of dollars, like 1,500, 2,000. I've seen them up to like 2,500. It, it's so cool. So if that's something you're interested in. Also, they give you the ability to use your camera for more than just your live stream. If you want to film something and get cool time lapses, using a slider is a great way to do that. Um, you can also stand it straight up and get a nice panning shot and it's all motorized So if you want to put it at a 90 degree angle You can just have the camera going up and down and filming the shot of something very very cool effect, but uh, Okay, so next thing is uh, Capture cards. All right, so when you want to improve your video quality and you're moving to uh, a better camera than a webcam You're going to need a capture card there are a lot of options out there, and there are a couple that I will mention. There's one that I'm a really big fan of. Doesn't mean that the others are not as good, but it's the one that I've been using for years. It's 
by a company called Elgato. So they make all kinds of products that are specifically related to streaming. Now, I, I've actually recently spoken with uh, one of the guys at Elgato and they, much like Apogee, are sold out of pretty much everything because everyone's stuck at home and trying to do streams and so they're struggling to you know keep up with uh, the demand. But they offer a ton of capture cards. If you're just running basically the video out of your camera and wanting to get it onto your computer for your stream, this is a great option right here, the Cam Link. So the Cam Link, it's as simple as can be. It's fantastic because it, you can go up to 4K if you want. Obviously, I'm not rocking 4K right now, um, but you can actually run uh, your video signal out of your camera. So, you know, in the example of the, the guy that I just showed you, he's running out of the output of his camera. I think, remember exactly, I think it uses a mini HDMI. And so he just has a mini HDMI cable that goes mini HDMI to HDMI. And you can see on the cam link, there's an HDMI input. Now, if you're sending a video source, I recommend going with uh, one of these other options. So if you're, let's say gaming or you're doing like a, a live concert where you, you have like a animation or something that you have basically like you're triggering something to play at the same time it's not coming from a camera uh, like the hd 60s or the 60s plus uh, are great options this is actually what i use i'm not using it right now because i have no need to because i don't have a good camera i'm just running basically my camera goes usb into my computer but if you're running um, a camera that doesn't connect the digital uh, doesn't connect digitally, you're going to need to convert that analog signal to digital to run into your computer. It's basically the exact same thing as what Apogee makes, but it's for video instead of for audio. It's converting analog to digital and digital to analog. Okay, lighting. Lighting is another huge aspect of making your video look good. Now we talked about this a little bit in the first stream, since you know we got the Elgato site up here, they make some of the best uh, lights I've seen in quite a while for streams similar to what I'm doing right now. So this is one of the things that uh, I've been speaking with them that they're gonna send me. So there are two different uh, lights they make. They make the Key Light Air and then the Key Light. The Key Light is kind of the, the more advanced version. It gets brighter. The Key Light Air is a little less expensive. It doesn't get as bright, still does a great job. I don't know if you guys are familiar with iJustine. Boom three key lights. You can see them all right there. And hype mic again. Boom. But she basically sets these up and the lighting is, it, she does a great job. I mean, she is a, a pretty significant streamer. Obviously she posted this video a week ago and has over 800,000 views. Lighting. If you don't have the ability to go get like an Elgato, you know, light or something like that, because they are hard to get a hold of. I showed you this in the first stream, but what I'm using is a very inexpensive, like ring light from Amazon. The price has gone up drastically since everyone's buying all this streaming stuff, but I got my um, ring light, uh, I think it's a 12 inch, is either 10 or 12 inch ring light, and I have it uh, kind of up here. I'm not shooting it right at my face. Uh, I am kind of bouncing it off the walls to just give like a general light. Um, I'm also lighting myself with my monitor. The light that you see coming from like, this is, it's a very kind of soft, gentle light. Watch it change right now. Okay, so. I'm assuming you should have seen a change there in the lighting because I have uh, a secondary monitor set up right here and I have basically my entire background is a very soft white and I have the brightness of the screen very low. Another thing to keep in mind with lighting before we move on to the next one is uh, a problem that a lot of people have that I don't hear people talk about too much and it's a problem that I have and that's the fact that I wear glasses and you can see the reflection in my glasses wherever I look and it's so annoying. But if you get good lights and you have them positioned in the right place, you can avoid that in a way. So you can see, oh, hey, look at that in my glasses. You can see my ring light up there. There it is right there. That's, if I was able to set, if I had the right gear basically and I was able to set everything up the way I wanted it to, see how right now you don't really see much of a reflection? Awkward angle because I'm not looking anywhere near the camera, but, it's all about placement. And unfortunately, I, you know, with what I have at home, I can't really do that. I kind of did the best I could. So you're not seeing that the entire time I'm talking, that'd be very distracting, but uh, you're seeing, you know, a little bit, bit of glare, but next thing, and this is a big one. And it's actually the last thing uh, in this topic. And that is single cam versus multi-cam. 
So multicam is two cameras. Basically, it gives you the ability to have multiple shots of some. But when you have multiple cameras, uh, it's just different angles you can switch between that uh, play into the experience that you're giving uh, your viewers. So if you don't have multiple cameras, the, the motorized slider that I mentioned actually gives you that feel of multiple cameras because really when you have multiple cameras, it's, it's about catching different views and different angles and having movement to it when you have a motorized slider you also have that so that's one way that people can kind of work around it um without having multiple cameras now that guy i showed you earlier has two cameras and a slider so he's he's a, a video guy all right guys and gals here we go this is the part that i am so excited to talk to you about that is how to improve the experience of your live streams there are so many different uh tactics to achieving this and i'm going to start with a really simple one your thumbnail not this one but the thumbnail that you use on your video to advertise your stream thumbnails are everything especially if you're posting uh videos uh, on a video content platform like youtube if you don't have a good thumbnail you're not going to get anywhere near the amount of views even having a good thumbnail or uploading a thumbnail period instead of just having like a shot of your video as your thumbnail, uploading a video actually increases your um, your ranking, so to speak, for your video and it plays into the YouTube algorithm as far as how people will organically come across your content. If you have wanted to make thumbnails uh, for your videos and you don't know how, a lot of people think they have to have, you know, Photoshop and all kinds of like skill and background. You can do it that way for sure. And I've done it that way, but there is a great resource I want to introduce you guys to. Again, this is one of those things. There are probably 50 different great resources and you guys may know of some as well, but I'm going to show you one that I've used for years and I love. It's so simple and there are already templates set up inside of it for each of the different streaming platforms that would require a thumbnail. This is called Adobe Spark, okay? You can go to spark.adobe.com. And basically, you, you see some templates here. There are so many, and it's all about what do you wanna create? It is a drag and drop platform that requires no you know, graphic editing capabilities or skills whatsoever. And it has all of the sizing right for what you wanna do. So if I go to view all here, you can see YouTube thumbnail, Twitter post, a teaser video. And you can either start with a template or you can start from scratch and do your own thing, which I is usually what I do. I just select like the template that I want so that it gives me the right sizes and then I start from scratch. I don't use you know any of their graphics. They have so many different options for colors and fonts and layouts and it's really, really cool. So highly recommend it if you're wanting to get into streaming more, create good thumbnails, because that's what's gonna get people to your stream and it's going to help your channel or your page or you know whatever, it's gonna help you grow your following. The next thing, simple, but the content. Okay, so one thing that I hear people say all the time, people oftentimes think that they have to be a an expert in their field in order to create content that people would wanna watch. I have one good friend that is incredibly talented at video and for years he's been talking about starting a YouTube channel and um, you know, putting out content, teaching people how to do things. But he just keeps talking about it because he's like, it's like too big for him to, to really just you know simplify. It's like all you gotta do is just put one video out and just think about the one video. As far as content goes, you don't need to be a, an expert in the field that you're talking about. Just talk about what you know. What people love to see is uh, someone who's engaging. And you don't even have to be talking about something from a technical standpoint like I'm doing. It's okay to just have fun, to be goofy. And that's where it gets into um, you know, what the purpose of your stream is. Because not every live stream or video needs to be something that is technically related. Sometimes it's just a vlog. Sometimes it's about having fun, making people laugh. But you want to be engaging, and this is super important, and I see people miss this all the time. It is so important to engage with your audience. Ask them questions, talk to them, get their feedback. 
I can't tell you how many live streams I've seen where people are not looking at the chat and that's something that'll come with time. The more you're doing live streams, you're going to find it's easier if you just like have a place where you open up your chat, you can have it on your phone or on an iPad or on a screen, it's especially helpful if you have multiple screens. But engaging with your chat is super important. Another one that's really big, schedule your stream ahead of time because when you schedule a stream, it gives people the ability to, if they see, uh, you know, this live stream, they see a little thumbnail that's really appealing and it says this will be live on this day at this time. That will be circulating long before there's even a video to watch, a thumbnail and a date and time that it'll be live. And if people are logged into YouTube, they can click a button to set a reminder. Cannot tell you what a difference that makes because people will forget. Let's say you schedule your stream for three days from now. That gives you the ability to capture an audience for up to three days that you would not get if you just went live. So, and all of that is done on the back end of whatever platform you're streaming to. If it's YouTube, uh, you would just basically uh, go to the YouTube studio, which is found under your account dropdown in the upper right hand corner of YouTube. And you open up YouTube studio and you hit the go live button and it's going to ask you if you want to go live now or you want to schedule a stream for the future. You put in the date, the time, all that, you upload your thumbnail. Definitely helpful thing to do. Next, choosing the right encoder software. If you're not familiar with encoder software, we talked about it a little bit last week. Um, I actually showed you an example of some encoder software that uh, probably the most popular option and that is called OBS. It's what I'm using right now. It's a uh, open broadcast. It's free, which is a big part of that. And you can do pretty much everything you want to do in it. Okay, so this is my software basically that I'm using to broadcast right now. A couple things to point out as I resized here. I'll have my webcam. Um, a couple things to point out. You can see back here the color of my desktop screen. It's that uh, kind of like a light white or gray. Uh, that's one of the things I'm using to light myself. So. Um, here inside of OBS, I have, so I have scenes that I can add. Um, you can see if I hop between some of these different things here, that's what I've set up. Inside of my scenes, I can set sources. I can set my microphone, which I could mute and unmute or hide and unhide. My webcam, which I just hid because it was kind of hiding there in the background of the video. You can see if I click and turn it on, what happens? You can see it eh, just like in the background of the video right here. I just hit it so that it's less distracting uh, for the time being. You can set multiple audio sources. So you can basically plug in an audio interface and send so many channels to this at once. Uh, my friend who is going live, he's got multiple instruments plugged in and a microphone. And he is basically using loopback to send audio from Logic that he's got mixed into OBS. So this is uh, an example of a broadcasting software here, and it is definitely the most common. Um, now, there are a lot of options out there. I have mentioned a bunch of them, but I want to show you one that I love. Um, we're not going to do a deep dive into it, but I want to introduce you to it, and there is a reason why. So this is Streamlabs OBS. There's a company called Streamlabs, that I have been using for years, they have had this, it's their own version of OBS that they've taken. And in my opinion, they have improved it pretty drastically. So you have the ability to do all kinds of things in OBS, um, add all kinds of overlays, themes, widgets, this is my favorite part of spicing up a live stream. So let me give you an example. Um, you can see right here, and this, this is not exclusive to Streamlabs OBS. This is just something that is incredibly easy to do in Streamlabs OBS. I could do this same exact thing in uh, the version of OBS that I'm using. If you go to Streamlabs, create an account, you, you have this insane library of overlays and themes and widgets that you can take the code for and insert them into whatever broadcast software you're using like OBS. So I want you to see what these look like and then I'm going to show you why Streamlabs OBS is so powerful. So let's say, um, let's, let's take a look at the themes. There is a crazy library of themes 
that you can add. So themes are going to give you everything from like uh, a title at the beginning that says, you know, stream starting soon. And then you could add a widget on top of that that would give a timing countdown, like 10 minutes out and then counting down, you know, the seconds and minutes. Um, and these theme packs come with a whole bunch of different stuff like animations. Look at the animation there. It's so cool. So this one specifically obviously is for gaming, but you can trigger these themes. You can set them up as sources basically and trigger them to basically happen at any point. One that I love, and this is a little distracting, so I'll go back to this one. One that I love, and you know, because I'm a gamer, I have streamed games for, you know, I've streamed games for a little while. You would not believe how this changes the experience for people that are starting to, or you know, trying to grow their audience. Adding things like a widget that gives some kind of animation on the screen every time someone subscribes, all of a sudden, every single person subscribes because they want to see their name up there with a little animation. Anytime you get a donation, it pops their name up on the screen, gives another little animation, maybe plays a sound. Uh, you can add widgets for things like uh, songs. So let's say you want to add a widget for music. You can actually create a, almost like a virtual DJ who gives a list of songs that you've selected ahead of time because you don't want to deal with copyright strikes and stuff, but you can determine or define like, here are 20 different songs that uh, I'm setting up for this playlist for the stream in, in this uh, music widget. And you can actually open it up so that people in your stream can continue to be a part of your stream by voting for the song they want to play next in the background over what you're doing. It's pretty cool. There is a really, uh, really good one called CloudBot. So the CloudBot, oh my gosh, you guys, this is going to change the experience of streaming for you, just this thing alone. So the CloudBot gives you the ability to do everything from have a moderator in your stream. So if you're doing a friendly family stream, for example, well, you, you're gonna get demonetized or you're gonna get banned or kicked if there are people swearing, things like that. So you can have your cloud bot or your, your chat bot basically moderate everything in your stream so that people can't do things that you don't want them to do. Because if you're doing something like I'm doing, I try, you know, to look back at the chat as often as possible, but I might miss something and you know, like I might miss something and catch it two or three minutes later. But if someone's like going crazy, saying all kinds of like nutty stuff and you're like, dude, this person needs to not be here. Your cloud bot will take care of that. If you've determined what is and is not allowed, it'll boot them out. It'll warn them first and hide what they're doing. And if they're continuing to break the rules, it just boots them out. And then you, you don't have to worry about like getting demonetized and all that stuff. You can add uh, this chat bot, which will give you the ability to do giveaways based on predetermined conditions. And let me explain what I mean. So let's say, and this is another huge way to grow your audience. Let's say that you, um, like we are today, we're giving away a, uh, a mic plus. Uh, just a little bit, uh, probably like 10 minutes, 15 minutes from now. And if I had, if this was my channel, I would add this chatbot into the stream and I would set a list of predetermined conditions to enter the giveaway. So predetermined conditions would be, um, I usually, like when I would do this, I would usually do like three, maybe four things. So you have to be subscribed to the channel. You have to drop a like on the video. Uh, and you have to type, you know, this word, like whatever I say, like I predetermine it. You have to type this word into the chat. If someone meets the criteria for all three of those, so I would say, hey guys, all right, we're gonna do our giveaway. Uh, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you've liked the video, uh, and then type, uh, you know, Mike Plus into the chat, right? If I had set that up and predetermined it, my chatbot would run the whole thing. It would randomly select the person based on the criteria. If someone was typing that word in, but they hadn't done these other things, the chatbot checks on that. So it's a great way to grow your audience. You could say things like, make sure you turn on uh, post notifications so you don't miss another live stream. No, even people that don't care about your content, honestly, are gonna do it and they'll think, oh, I can just turn it off later and it, no one turns it off. It's really, really helpful. Um, and the last one I wanna talk about under Streamlabs is tips. So you have the ability to add, uh, it's like a, a tip jar basically to your stream. So if people like the content and you would not believe uh, how often this happens, not just for gaming, for everything, but when you're doing live streams, people want to say thank you. 
And so if you set up uh, the tip option in Streamlabs OBS, it actually takes care of all the processing and everything. And there isn't even a fee. I don't know how they do it. It's crazy. And it just basically gets deposited into your uh, Streamlabs account. And then whenever you want, you just transfer it out of Streamlabs to your bank account. When I first started streaming games, I had tips set up and every now and then like someone would tip me when I added a widget that turned tipping me into a game, it got crazy. Oh, I mean the very first time I added this little widget. It's called, you'll see it on Streamlabs. It's called um, Stream Boss. So silly. And it was basically all based on uh, whoever gave the biggest donation. It would make them the stream boss and it would put their name up in the top corner. And then you could knock them out of their position by donating more. And it became this game. And I'm, I was thinking like, this is silly. And I'm like, guys, is this dumb? Like, I feel gimmicky, you know, like there's no, you don't have to like donate. Like, I don't care. I just wanted to try it out. And they're like, no, this is fun. We, we actually get to do something fun here while we're hanging out in the stream. You know, these are all things that professional streamers in, in all genres know about and do. They have the animated overlays because people want to get the shout out. They want to get the attention on the stream, right? They want to see their name. They screenshot it and they'll post, they'll do a, you know, a tweet like, dude, I was in so-and-so stream, whatever. So um, so anyway, that's Streamlabs. Now, jumping back a little bit, why is Streamlabs OBS so cool? Well, one of the reasons besides the fact that I think the layout is just way cleaner, all of these things that I'm talking about are already built into it. So we were on the website there and we're looking at all of these options. Anyone can go there, it's free to sign up and 99% of everything that I've mentioned is free. If you want to add it to your stream and you're using something like OBS, you basically define everything the way you want it and it would give you this code and then you take that code, go into OBS and enter the code and you know, it's, it's, it's more of a process. With Streamlabs OBS, it's literally built in. You just click, yep, this, 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 and it boop, just pops up on the screen. Really, really convenient. Another great thing um, about Streamlabs OBS is once you configure it the way you want, like you've got your your themes set up and your name and you you know you've got your camera and all that stuff set up, it's all cloud-based to your account. So let's say that I go to a friend's house or uh, I go to some conference that I'm speaking at. I can open it up on any computer and it's exactly the same as the way I set it up at my house. Okay, so there is one more thing that I want to tell you guys about. And that is called Stream Deck. Brand new company. I know you never heard of Elgato. Haven't talked about them like 10 times already in the stream. They have this um, product called Stream Deck. It started out as a product like this that I will open up and show you right now. And there's a reason that I'm telling you about this. So Stream Deck is going to give you the ability to, it's a piece of hardware, very similar to something like my, my GoXLR I have here. It just sits on your desk during your live stream and it gives you the ability to trigger anything in OBS or Streamlabs OBS. I could just hit the button and automatically transition to the next scene. I could queue things up. I could do like my animations, my overlays, uh, whatever I want. You can program all of that into the Stream Deck ahead of time. So you can see here, uh, this is basically all uh, programmable uh, features. If you don't have a Stream Deck, well, you probably do have a Stream Deck and you didn't know you have it. Mobile Stream Deck? What? You can download it onto your smart device, iPhone, iPod, iPad, and I'm sure a whole bunch of other uh, smart device uh, types out there. You basically can link your phone or your iPad or whatever to OBS or Streamlabs OBS and control the whole thing from your phone or your iPad, which is so much better. Um, and it adds a lot to your stream as well. You know, it's the same kind of thing as you guys are watching me. It's, you see how, and I, I know this stuff, I do it a lot, but you can still see how it's like, uh, if I go to do something that I wasn't planned for, someone asks a question, I wanna show them something. It's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, give me a second and I do this. It, it makes such a difference to be able to go to things like immediately when you wanna to go to them. My hope with today was that it does a little bit of what the very first stream I did is. So in the first stream, I mentioned a bunch of things kind of uh, generically, and I noticed I got so many emails that following week asking me about the same 
uh, or, or to go in kind of deeper on some of the things that I talked about. So that was my hope with today. Here's what would be great. If you guys, if I mentioned something that it would really be great, you know, and you'd love it if I did a deeper dive on it, I want to hear from you. So go to apogeedigital.com and click on the learn from home button. And I would love to hear from you. If there's something specific that would be helpful for you guys to do a deeper dive on, that's what we'll do. Um, so this helps though, because it kind of gives you an idea of some of the things that are out there. Guys, thank you as always so much. Really having a blast hanging out with you. Sorry, camera's over here, keep forgetting. Really having a blast hanging out with you guys. I hope that you're uh, leaving with some, uh, some more helpful information. I cannot wait to see, you know, what you guys come up with. So if you ha are starting a channel, you're going to start streaming somewhere. Let us know. We'd love to check it out. Maybe throw some ideas or pointers out there. And uh, with that said, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, and I will catch you all next Thursday for Madam Gandhi and then Friday for the class. Cool.